We're here at Rest Park because the NIAE, uh, National Institute of Agricultural Engineering, was relocated here in the 1947-1948. The institute was, had been formed in 1924 uh, as part of Oxford University. It then moved to Askham Bryan, became the National Institute of Agricultural Engineering, and then moved to Silso, as I say, in 47 and 48. It was the NIAE for a long time, but it went through a, a name change and became AFRC Engineering briefly, but then settled on Silso Research Institute, which it remained as until its closure in 2006. What I'm going to try and do in a few minutes is just to look at what Silso Research Institute, or the NIAE, what contribution that made over the almost 60 years when it operated from Rest Park. Now, you've all been given a copy of the book, and that gives you a lot more detail than I'll be able to cover in a relatively few slides and brief time that I've got now. But what I will try and do is to pick out some of the highlights and to see where some of the work that was done at the Institute actually mapped into the bigger story of agricultural engineering in the UK. We have to start, I think, by looking at tractors. And tractors enables me to go right back to the 1950s when there was work at the Institute looking at hydrostatic tractors, a development which didn't directly map to commercial reality, but a number of developments that were included in it have gone through and become part of what is now commercial practice. Quite an innovative step at the time to go to a hydrostatic tractor and it attracted quite a lot of publicity and here you can see that the Duke of Edinburgh in the 50s visited the Institute and was shown some of the work that was done there. In a similar vein, the work at the Institute during the uh, 1970s and 80s looked at uh, developing guided tractors, driverless tractors. This of course was before the time of GPS and was looking at using the available technology then to effectively guide the tractor and steer it and turn it at the ends of fields. Again, a step that showed the need to uh, help drivers and use technology which has since become superseded by uh, GPS. Most of the work was related to tractors for agricultural operations in UK or certainly in European conditions but also did look at what might happen if we have very different conditions. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that we had a, a rice paddy at full scale with a simulated tractor on it that enabled us to look at tractive conditions under what were very different uh, soil conditions in rice fields. Tractors and testing are very much part of the history at the Institute. Testing had a much broader dimension in that early work tested nearly all agricultural machinery, but what I've done here is to highlight some of the tractor testing work, which continued beyond the other testing activities because of the need to provide information about drawbar performance, noise levels, cab vibration and, and cab environment. And here you can see the tractor running on the test track, which is still here at Silso, uh, not used anymore, pulling a load car with all the instrumentation and the ability to load the tractor. Research and development was important, and on the right-hand side here you can see work done that was looking at improving the vibration or reducing the vibration on the uh, operator by using a suspended cab. And again, important information that started to influence the way in which cab design is now undertaken by many of the manufacturers. Wouldn't be right to talk about work at the NIAE stroke Silso Research Institute without considering grass and grassland management. Work particularly by Will Clinner looked at ways in which the drying rate of crops could be changed by manipulating the crop while it was cut and subsequently managed. And that work attracted a Queen's Award for Technological Achievement in 1984 and the McRobert Award in 1985. And I think the institution still has the McRobert Award in its office, a very prestigious award relating to agricultural engineering. So a lot of work on grass and forage, particularly by Will Cleaner and Gordon Shepherdson, and was an important milestone in the way of the work of the Institute. Will Cleaner, working with Roger Arnold, particularly on combines, also developed a stripper header, which effectively enabled the combine to take only the grain and some of the uh, head into the combine 
and therefore dramatically increased work rates. A device which effectively won the Queen's Award for Technical Achievement uh, in conjunction with Shelbourne Reynolds that were uh, making a commercial version of it and that award was granted to the Institute in 1991 and you can see a, a picture there of the team on the day when that award was presented. You probably won't have seen many stripper headers in the UK. The development, as I say, by Sh Shelbourne Reynolds has been more successful in the US where they've marketed a significant number and it's important to recognise that the patent income that came from that development has been an important component that uh, has persisted longer than the Institute. Some of the work at the Institute looked at uh, the animals as well as animal production and here I've shown uh, the work that looked at uh, poultry harvesting particularly against a background of improving animal welfare. The picking of broilers out of broiler shed at the time when it, they are inverted commas harvested is a very traumatic activity particularly for the birds and therefore there was work to see if that could be both mechanized and also made much less uh, dramatic as far as the birds were concerned so here we've got rotary arms with rubber fingers that effectively uh, shepherd the birds onto a conveyor up uh, and straight into a, uh, a pallet and away onto a lorry with the minimum of rough handling which has important implications for animal welfare but also in terms of food quality because damage to, to birds makes a big difference to the quality of the chicken that you ultimately eat. Also looking at animals, an important piece of work at the, work, at the Institute was uh, in, associated with robotic milking which had a number of dimensions related to cow identification, to uh, the mechanisms for identifying where cow, cow's teats were automatically positioning teat cups and monitoring the way in which cows could uh, automatically be uh, monitored uh, and milked. And this developed by Delaval here, but also by another number of other com companies, such that uh, automated milking is now a recognised and well-established means of uh, dairy management in the UK. Those of you who know me would realise you're not going to get away without some mention of spraying, and in 1992, the work at the Institute on Patch Spraying was awarded the SKF uh, Environment Award for its work particularly on directing sprays at weed patches. The facilities at the Institute were of an international standard in terms of spray research, and we'll say a little bit more about that a little later on. Part of the work also was looking at the way in which materials could be handled and the way in which the wheelings on ground could be uh, managed by, in this case, using large gantries. And in the bottom left-hand corner was work that was undertaken by Tim Chaman. I think Tim has now found other ways to manage uh, wheelings with his work on controlled traffic. But a number of the experiments at the Institute looking at different approaches to both farm transport and also field management had implications for things like that, that are now undertaken as part of controlled traffic and also vehicle development when we see things like the fast track, which came out of some of the work at the Institute. And while most of it was directed at European conditions, there was also a overseas unit that looked particularly to take the sort of technology and see if it could be applied in a way that was appropriate to overseas activities, particularly by engaging with uh, local communities. If my colleagues from overseas were here, I would have to make reference to the fact we've got a donkey rather than a tractor. But they also used some tractor implements as well as some handheld stuff, which um, Dave Tinker here is, is showing a prototype of.